Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're here with Veronica Wong from SafePal, where she's the co-founder and CEO. Can you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, this is Veronica. I am the CEO of SafePal. Uh, SafePal is a secure and user-friendly cryptocurrency hardware wallet built for the masses. Um, I personally used to work in Tencent for seven years. It's one of the biggest tech giants located in China. Uh, I was working for the security department uh, responsible for a financial security product that is now serving more than 300 leading financial institutions uh, here in local communities. Uh, so empowering them with the advanced mass data and AI technology. Um, so I personally have been always spending a lot of my time learning and researching all of the new technologies that could be revolutionary and bring dramatic changes in human history. Um, so Bitcoin came into my site in 2015 uh, when one of my friends sent me the Bitcoin white paper. Uh, I was immediately drawn into the delicate model it has depicted. Uh, so for anyone who has a technical sense, uh, it is not difficult to find that um, Bitcoin and blockchain could be the kind of revolutionary technology that we should pay uh, close attention to. Uh, so I didn't go into blockchain right after that. Uh, instead, I treated it as a new research topic and observed the market changes over the years. Um, so it was not until 2017, uh, two years later, that I started to seriously thinking about the entering this market and be part of it. Um, so that is the beginning of the SAPA story. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, how does your day look like on an average day now? Oh, yeah, I usually spend one third of my time in business travels. Uh, I often visit uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and also Hong Kong uh, frequently because uh, we have we have our business partners there. Uh, if I'm not going out, I will usually get up at six thirty, and I need to drop off my kids at school and then arrive at my office at eight thirty uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, usually in the morning, we will need to go over the morning conference with my team uh, to go over all of the items and catch up uh, all of the uh, uh, issues uh, in the last day and check unread messages and emails, I, I guess, mo like most people do uh, when they arrive at the office. And mo mostly, I will arrange all of the meetings and conference in the morning so that I can leave the whole afternoon to do my own uh, personal work, uh, like marketing, operational, uh, outplan, all of that. And there will be some partners visiting our offices sometimes. Uh, nighttime is usually for family. I need to leave office at 7 p.m. to have dinner with my, my family and then start back to work uh, at 9 p.m. and then work for another two or, five, uh, two or three hours till midnight. So that is an ordinary day like work like uh, on my side. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, definitely sounds like the uh, the CEO lifestyle. So um, for people who don't know what SafePal is, can you give a brief introduction to that and then maybe um, a more advanced introduction for people who are more familiar with crypto and uh, crypto wallets? Yes, yes. Um, so SafePal uh, was founded in 2018. Uh, it is a secure and user-friendly cryptocurrency hardware wallet that aims to provide the best crypto custody solution uh, for the masses. Um, so uh, SAPA received a Binance strategic investment in the same October in 2018. And our first hardware wallet, SAPA S1, has now been sold to over 60 countries global wide. Um, so SAPA is a multi-blockchain wallet that can support various assets on chain. So till now, we have supported 15 blockchains and more than 1,500 tokens. And that is growing day by day. Uh, lately, we are releasing a new version that is accommodating Polkadot, Kusama, and Stella into SAPAL wallet. Uh, so the biggest difference between SAPAL and other hardware wallets, uh, as you might know, Ledger and Treasure, is that uh, firstly, uh, it adopts, uh, it is 100% offline. It adopts uh, QR code communications. Uh, I have my own SafePal wallet here. Uh, this one it was made for Binance. So uh, on it, there is a camera. So there's no USB uh, connection, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi inside it. You can only communicate with the APP uh, through QR codes. So it, this way, uh, it can block all of the possible uh, remote attacks uh, from online attackers. 
And secondly, it is quite easy to use. Uh, so there is a mini screen here uh, showing all of the asset details. Like when you need to send money to other people, uh, you can have a double check here very easily, a two page uh, double check on the tiny screen. It is smartphone friendly, meaning you can carry around with your PayPal and then transfer money and trade on Binance Dex and all of the exchanges uh, wherever uh, wherever you like. So uh, these are the two biggest differences uh, between PayPal and other hardware wallets you might see uh, on the market. Okay, yeah, awesome, awesome. And um, what problem did you guys set out to solve with SafePal? Very good question. Uh, so when we first started SafePal, uh, we want to solve three existing problems that we have seen on the market. Firstly is security. Uh, so since Bitcoin was born, there are accumulative more than 5 billion at least worth Bitcoin went missing uh, or stolen. Uh, that is only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so security has been the hitting pain point uh, impacting people's confidence in blockchain and cryptocurrencies. We think it is cr very crucial uh, for a hardware wallet to solve uh, the security issues uh, in many, um, uh, uh, how to say, wallet uh, service providers. Uh, secondly, is about uh, user experience. Uh, this is another point that we are trying to stress. Uh, for all of the end uh, users um, because I heard many users including myself also I tried the letter uh, in two years ago uh, people complain about how cumbersome it is to use a hardware wallet without any technical background uh, so this should be a will be change because if we are firm believers of blockchain and we believe in the coming future everyone should have their own cryptocurrencies and they should have a decent wallet and nice wallet to use by daily basis. Uh, so we think user uh, interfaces and uh, user experience is quite uh, important for uh, user acquisition in the long run. And last but not least is about uh, cost e effectiveness. Uh, so most of the hardware wallets, um, to be honest, they are selling at a quite high price between like uh, 70 bucks and to up to 700 bucks. So it is quite important to bring the price down to lower um, the uh, to lower the uh, the threshold for end users to enter this market uh, to make uh, the wallet more accessible to the masses. Uh, so people will tend to consider buying a wallet when it is at a reasonable price level. And we think uh, for PayPal, uh, the, uh, the the main target is also to provide a, a accessible wallet for all of the normal users, uh, people who are newbies, who, who are new to blockchain technology, uh, they can use a SafePal wallet at ease uh, without any difficult or uh, strange uh, pronouns uh, to learn uh, about Bitcoin and SafePal uh, uh, and blockchain. So we think these three are the main issues that we are trying to target and solve. Um, so these concepts are all uh, involved in our first uh, product, SafePal S1. Yeah, awesome, that's all awesome. to the to the question. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree because for me, um, the first two things that definitely jumped out at me was that it was significantly cheaper than a lot of the other wallets and um, mm -hmm. even offered better features than wallets in the same price range. Or It was still cheaper, but um, when I compared like to the Nano S, um, it could hold a lot more cryptocurrencies as well. So it had more features and it was less expensive, as well as also much easier to navigate with the actual uh, directional pad versus using just two buttons. So yeah, definitely a lot of great features you guys managed to pack in there. So um, how was the... Uh, relationship with Binance formed and uh, and how, how did that uh, sort of how was that process? Oh, that, that is a very interesting question. Uh, so uh, um, we uh, as I mentioned, uh, SAPEL was founded in early 2018 and in that uh, September we started to apply for the Binance Labs uh, first incubation program and finally got enlisted at the end of that September. Uh, so during the whole uh, two months uh, application stage, uh, Binance has played a very strict and conscientious role in team diligence. Um, they sent us a long list of questions asking like your living story, your background, your business understanding and your vision, all of that. 
Um, so many partners and, and friends came asking why Binance finally chose us. I, I thought I thought about it for a while. I, I guess uh, they finally chose us because of our motivation. Uh, so motivation is about why you choose to do something and why you think it is important and how persistent your aspiration is. So SAPA team is very technical style. Uh, three quarters of our team members are with R&D backgrounds. Uh, so such a team are very committed to the blockchain technology. So we are not just getting here and 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 and, and earn a bunch of money and then leave this for good. Uh, we are firm believers of blockchain and Bitcoin. So we think blockchain is going to become one important part. I cannot say all, but at least one very important part in the coming future. So secondly, uh, due to our working experiences in internet industry, like we many partners uh, in our team uh, used to work in Tencent, uh, Huawei, uh, Samsung, Asia uh, Optical. Uh, so they are mostly used in IT companies. So we play we pay close attention to user feedback. Uh, so we we are very practical when it comes to a new market solution. Uh, we will primarily try to locate the pain points and real user cases that are truly existing in this section. Uh, so we found a lot of them. So uh, we found that our wallet as the basic infrastructure in blockchain ecosystem uh, still has many missing parts of it. Like people are losing money uh, because of hacking cases happening every day. And uh, though we are in a decentralized industry, there are still a lot of companies doing centralized things, like such as uh, providing centralized wallet services. Uh, they could ed ed easily get away with your money stored in the wallet. Uh, so for, for example, uh, about the bad user e experience that people have been complaining about. So honestly, we are happy to know that. Uh, we are glad that there are still opportunities to improve. This gave us uh, a chance. So we started to build our first prototype uh, from that uh, January from scratches. And uh, a few months later, we did it. Uh, we brought this prototype to Binance and to CZ, to Hei, to all of the Binance uh, core members and demonstrated the basic concept and what we are going to do with uh, this wallet and what, what our plan would be in the coming future. And they are very impressed. So uh, I think it is the belief in blockchain and strong motivation to provide better solution and also the execution uh, that has finally made Binance to become our earliest investor. So that is a quite a long story and very interesting story uh, that happened between us and Binance. Uh, so till now, to this point, uh, Binance has be been uh, one of our most important partners in the ecosystem. So uh, like on Twitter, you can see SafePal and Binance interact uh, from time to time about their up upcoming uh, dev plans. And we are also the first uh, group of uh, hardware wallets uh, trying to integrate with Binance DEX and also all of the important upgrades from Binance. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I, I think it'll be really interesting to see the integration with Binance Dex, and I'm sure a lot of people will be excited to see that as well. Um, yeah, I think that's really, really cool. I'm sure a lot of other people uh, trying to get their projects funded will also kind of look to this story as an inspiration for uh, for something that they might be working on as well. Um, so how did SafePal get its name, and then what was the original idea or motivation behind starting it as well? Well, the, the idea of building SafePal is to provide the most secure and uh, easy to use hardware wallet. So the name SafePal actually comes uh, from the combination of Pal, uh, which is related to wallets like PayPal. Like. And safe is a stress word uh, that we want to emphasize, uh, especially when we think security as the cornerstone of the blockchain ecosystem, because all of the uh, blockchain world are built on codes. Uh, which uh, code security and uh, technical security are the cornerstone and the core part of the ecosystem. Uh, so that's how uh, SafePal get uh, its name. So talking about the motivation, uh, I share a little bit about our background, uh, about our team members and what we are trying to do. Uh, so the original story of SafePal started in late 2017. Uh, when uh, two of my friends, uh, my other two uh, founders, uh, one is uh, a product manager and leader in our team, Harry, and the other founder is our CTO, Liner. Uh, they have been uh, also paying close attention to uh, Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets for a few years. 
and 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 we share a lot of uh, uh, feedback and updates about uh, what what's going on in the ecosystem uh, frequently in the group chat. Uh, so uh, at some point in the late December in 2017, uh, uh, one of our uh, member, uh, Liner, uh, the CTO, uh, said that maybe we should do something. Like uh, in 2017, many things happened, like the ICO boom. Uh, we see the, uh, the brilliant success of CryptoKitties and we saw the market could be like rocketing, like un unbelievably. Uh, we haven't seen anything like that before, even on the stock market. So uh, it was in the late 2017 that uh, we think maybe we should do something about uh, blockchain and Bitcoin. So we spent a few months uh, researching the whole uh, mar uh, market and to see what we can do. So uh, we chose finally to go with hardware wallets is because uh, half of our members come with hardware backgrounds. Uh, so we have our own hardware designers. We have our own uh, manufacturer uh, lines uh, according to our past uh, startup uh, experiences. We have our own uh, hardware uh, development or resources. And another half uh, of our members uh, came from, uh, like, like me, I used to work in Tencent, like uh, many of our uh, Android and iOS engineers used to work from uh, Tencent and Alibaba. So they have a very strong uh, internet developmental experiences. So we think we should do something in, be in between, like in software and hardware. So we didn't go with a, a, a pure software cryptocurrency wallet Instead, we chose to go with hardware wallets because we saw a lot of missing parts, like I mentioned, um, costly solution, very cumbersome experiences and, and, and problematic security and many vulner vulnerabilities uh, to be found. So we think, uh, yeah, it is what we are good at and we can start uh, from this part. Uh, so for a long run, uh, SayPal, we hope it to become one of the must-have wallets for any users when he enters uh, blockchain and Bitcoin ecosystem, uh, when they want to find a secure and nice wallet to, to, to use to keep uh, their assets safe and to move around with their money without worrying anyone stealing from it. Uh, so we hope that uh, in the long run, SAPEL could become one of the must-have wallets that for most uh, crypto users, not, not just for those expertise, but also for new beginners, for newbies, and also for mid middle layer users for different type of layers. So, so that is the beginning uh, and also the, uh, how to say, <laughs> the background story of how we started and that partially explained our motivation uh, to change uh, the problem that we are facing with and become one very important part of the ecosystem. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, like you mentioned, again, um, the threshold be is a lot lower with uh, with your wallet for people to be able to join in because, again, like with the price and everything else, it just makes it a lot easier for people to uh, rationalize getting started with a, with a hardware wallet and they can start to explore all the benefits of having one themselves. So where does SafePal fit in with other wallets in the uh, ecosystem? How is it uniquely different and then how is it similar? Very good question. So for a crypto user, um, the basic concept of SayPal is quite similar with other hardware wallets. Uh, for example, your private key is stored in the internet isolated hardware device like like this one, like, and each time when you need to transfer, you will need to approve the transaction by signing on the hardware device. So it supports universal mnemonic phrase standard, uh, meaning that you can recover your crypto assets on any BIP39044 standard uh, cryptocurrency wallets like SayPal. And also SayPal is a multi-blockchain wallet that can support various assets, like I mentioned. Uh, till now, we have added 15 blockchains and, and more are to come. And in the meantime, there are also some obvious differences between SayPal and other wallets. Um, let me take, uh, take Ledger Nano S as an example. Uh, so Lano, uh, Ledger Nano S is a USB type uh, hardware wallet. Uh, you need to use it by connecting it to the uh, PC or laptop uh, using a USB cable. But SayPal S1 is adopting different uh, mechanism. Uh, on SayPal, there's only a camera that you can use to, uh, to, to interact with the uh, APP, SayPal app. 
and and there is no uh, other uh, tech connection, uh, in external connection on it with uh, other laptop or PC. Uh, the only USB uh, port here is only for charging. Uh, so uh, it adopts an encrypted QR code um, communication. Uh, there are two advantages of it. So firstly, to scan a QR code, uh, it is a very short distance interaction meaning that no one can intercept your Bluetooth uh, signal in like 50 meters long uh, distance. Like your neighbor could steal your money uh, by inter intercepting your Bluetooth signal. But by scanning encrypted QR code, it is like only a short, like 10 centimeters distance. Uh, for other third party, it's, it is uh, very difficult it, unless they get your physical assets uh, in, in their hands. Uh, or else it is very difficult for them to hack into the wallets and, and to steal the private key. And secondly is that uh, Q encrypted QR code interaction is very easy for new beginners to get start. You don't need to do anything, you just follow the instruction on the screen and it would tell you, okay, now to screen to scan the QR code showed on your PayPal app, and then you are good to go. And enter the pin, pin code and you have the signature and then scan back. So the basic uh, uh, concept of uh, QR code interaction is very easy for uh, all of the smartphone users to, get, to be understand. And the second difference is that uh, PayPal can support unlimited cryptocurrencies on one device. Uh, you will need to install and uninstall the limited currencies like Ledger Nano S asks you to do. Uh, we are adopting a special hardware architect that is not restrained by the hardware memory. Uh, so till now, we are adding more and more currencies into this wallet, and with only one device, you can manage unlimited uh, assets uh, issued on chain. So last but not least, uh, another difference is that you don't need to carry around uh, a laptop or PC in order to trade uh, crypto or to send crypto anywhere. Uh, with PayPal, uh, you, you can move around uh, at, like you, as you like. So you can manage your asset instantly with your own smartphone installed with a PayPal app and then a PayPal S1. So that's all. Uh, so these are just uh, part of the ha uh, highlights of PayPal S1 uh, compared to Nano S. And welcome to explore more on our homepage, saypal.io, uh, or reach out for more information. Yeah, so that is a brief introduction about SayPal and what is what is it like and what is different uh, from other uh, competitors. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, <clears throat> one thing that was big for me with the Ledger S was that I could only uh, install about like three cryptocurrencies before yeah, yes. it started to get really full. So, yeah, being able to uh, to have unlimited with no restriction is is definitely a huge uh, pain point that you guys have solved with the SayPal. So. Um, yeah. What are some of the next big updates that you have in the works uh, or or that are set to release soon for SafePal? Um, in 2020, the most uh, important focus would be currency support and also uh, product security. Uh, firstly, about currency support, it is quite important for user acquisition. Uh, it makes uh, our product more accessible to more users in different communities. Uh, we have seen, we have worked with many excellent uh, um, projects like Harmony, like uh, coming next would be Stellar and Polkadot and also EOS and different like Neo, all of them. And we have seen different styles and different activities of uh, users in different communities. So we think it is very important uh, to make SafePal available uh, for different uh, assets so that these communities can get involved in the SafePal community. And secondly, it's about uh, product security. Uh, we have been uh, spending all of our, uh, uh, like half of our uh, time in uh, uh, integrated uh, the product security. Uh, we have releasing our new versions uh, e per month, I guess, from monthly basis and uh, improving all of the security details. And we have worked with uh, security teams uh, to do wallet penetration. Like in last year, we uh, did a test with a wallet fail. Uh, it is a uh, wallet hardware wallet expert team uh, from US, uh, German, and Russia. Uh, they did uh, uh, more than one month uh, penetration, three rounds uh, of penetration on SayPal S1. And finally, uh, it proved that there's uh, no uh, obvious uh, vulnerability uh, found. So WallyFail is also famous for making Ledger 
Badger, and you can find more information uh, about their hacking cases on their homepage, uh, wallet.io. Wallet so uh, we have been also uh, doing uh, similar things with a uh, few other uh, uh, security teams, both in China and also in Europe. Uh, we will surely disclose more further details about that when the tests uh, are done. So security would be the important focus on our side. And also in the Q4 in 2020, we are releasing a new type of hardware wallets, putting more mm. advanced features into it. Uh, so we can stay tuned and uh, we'll keep everyone posted about the product updates. Uh, yeah, that, that would be the rough plan uh, of uh, uh, SAPEL in 2020. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So um, for the new model, is it going to be a similar design or are you guys going to be trying out different designs? What, what will that look like? Yeah, we are still exploring about that. Uh, we are trying both the similar design and also a new design. Uh, uh, we cannot disclose that far. Uh, but uh, I, I bet people will like it because usually when we release a product, we will take at least uh, three rounds of uh, user uh, trials. Uh, we will invite a, a seed members from the community to try it out and to uh, collect their user feedback. And we will make sure the product is fully prepared for the uh, product release. Uh, so we cannot guarantee that it will happen in Q4. We hope it can it can happen in Q4, but we cannot guarantee about that because a hardware development is quite different uh, from software development. Like software development, you can take a few months to work OT and then the app is on. But for hardware, there are more tests and, and different tests and, and certificates and also hardware designs and testing uh, on it. Uh, it is more complicated uh, than a pure software product. So it will take much longer than we usually expect, at least uh, six months or to 10 months for a new product release. Uh, so we will keep everyone posted when it is ready. And, and, and we also let you know uh, if we want to use a new model on it. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. I'll be on the lookout for that because I think that'll be really, really cool to see. Um, so in the next year and then in the next five years, where do you see SafePal going? Uh, I know five years is a really long time, but just assuming uh, the more ideal uh, scenario in the in the crypto space, because again, the crypto space is pretty volatile. Yes, yes. Um, uh, since crypto space is still in its infancy, it is indeed quite difficult to predict uh, what, hap what will happen in the next decade or five years. Uh, we are fully prepared for that. Uh, the crypto world is changing and evolving day by day. Uh, so uh, wallet uh, on our, how to say, uh, in our understanding, wallets in the long run future uh, it will, there will be two different uh, roles of a cryptocurrency wallet. Uh, so firstly, like everyone knows right now, it is a custodian for your private key. Uh, it is one of the bridge that you interact with the blockchain, right? You, you, you will transfer, you try to move your assets, you need a cryptocurrency wallet. So it is a custodian for your own crypto assets. And in the long run, there will be more than just cryptocurrency issued on blockchain, but also different type of digital assets like your on-chain identity, your on-chain data, uh, your on-chain, like, uh, how to say, real estate. Uh, there will be different uh, tokens and assets issued on the blockchains. So wallets would be the interfaces between human and the blockchains. Uh, it will become the one important entrance uh, for uh, how to say blockchain ecosystem uh, apart from cryptocurrency there would be it would be the center where you manage all all of your blockchain uh, assets uh, including your data including your identity including all of your asset details for example in the long run if you want to authorize a third party to use your own medical data uh, you might need a wallet to sign and approve so in the long run, we think a wallet would be a very important infrastructure for a blockchain ecosystem. Uh, so in the coming few years, we will continue to enhance our own uh, product feature. Uh, we will try to develop a different type of uh, wallets for people to choose from uh, because different people have different tastes about how they would like to use their own hardware wallets. And we will also uh, pay close attention to uh, security. Uh, we are now designing our own bounty program and we are also uh, boosting all of the cooperation with the security teams at home and abroad. And also 
will listen closely to the user feedback from the community. Like, uh, for example, in our Telegram group, we have four to five uh, community manager. Uh, I mean, they are our own uh, full-time managers uh, in the Telegram, uh, supporting uh, seven, uh, 24 hours, uh, seven uh, days a week uh, for our users to collect all of their feedbacks and then to uh, fix all of the bugs and, and to solve all of the problems on our users' site. So uh, uh, user orientation is also a very important spirit. So we will keep that in our team. Uh, so in the long run, we will uh, uh, build SayPal a safer easier and uh, friendlier uh, wallet to use for uh, different type of users. So that is our long run goal. Awesome. Awesome. And um, so where can everyone go to learn more about SafePal? Yeah, firstly, of course, our homepage at SafePal.io. And you can find our updates uh, in our official blog. And you can also find us uh, in Twitter. Uh, the account is iSafePal. And also welcome to join our Telegram group uh, to share all of your feedback and your thoughts about uh, hardware wallets or, or all of the topic related to crypto. Uh, the Telegram ID is a safe wallet. Uh, you can search and you can find us there. Um, welcome to uh, stay tuned and, and we, we can't wait to hear more feedback from the community. Awesome. Awesome. So um, that's everything that I have for you. Thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything else that you mm -hmm. would like to say to the audience about SafePal before we end this off? Um, I guess that's pretty much of it. Uh, you asked very good questions and I have shared all of uh, the details I would like to share. So I would call it, yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for awesome. having me here. Awesome. Thank you again so much. Thank Cheers. you.